Another bit of uh, international news which uh, jumped onto the uh, scene this week was uh, the uh, referendum in the autonomous Spanish uh, community of Catalonia on independence uh, last weekend. Now, the Spanish uh, Constitutional Court deemed this referendum illegal and they violently suppressed the, the voter turnout, which despite uh, this happening, there was, I think, over uh, 800 people injured. 90% uh, of uh, Catalans who were able to cast a vote uh, voted to become uh, independent. Uh, Spain has said they're not going to recognise the results of this referendum. Uh, Cat Catalonia have said that you know they're we're willing to have a unilateral declaration of independence. So it set the scene for uh, a showdown between the Spanish government and the the Catalan government, and it's it's really. Uh, you know, we thought we'd never see something like this in in Western Europe, where you know violent, uh, you know, scenes on the s streets with you know government, a uh, government basically oppressing uh, a group of people, and it's also raised the question, you know, should states have the right to, or regions of a nation have the right to secede? Well, it's a complex uh, legal issue as well. Um, I'm not sure about the any facets of European law in regards to this, or in fact international law, or or, or even Spanish law. But I, I think that uh, it's interesting uh, if if the people are wanting independence, there is only so long a time that the Spanish government can hold these people back from gaining their independence at the end of the day. Um, and I don't think that the, the the use of military force to suppress a voter turnout is a very good option at all. In fact, it's something that you would expect uh, in a place like, um, uh, you know, Western Africa, Uganda, for instance, uh, where they use the military to, uh, you know, suppress voter turnout or, you know, uh, or Iraq in the days of Saddam Hussein. It's not something that you would expect uh, from a member of the the European Union. So I'm very surprised with that. We, but the, the question of the legal the validity, uh, the legal validity of this referendum is interesting. Uh, you said there's an, a 90 percent turnout. A 90 percent uh, which, vote good, which does independence. Make, 90% vote, the turnout was uh, about half. 47, yeah, sorry, I did get mixed up, yeah. I think it was about 47%. And 90% 90, 90 voted for it. Uh, and I, the, the issue is that uh, if, only, if less than half the people voted for it, even if it was an emphatic verdict like that, I don't think that you, you can recognise it. Uh, you can't recognise it until you've got a voter turnout of more than two thirds, uh, and the the percentage voting for probably independence is more than two thirds, I would say. Um, so I think that this is a is a good indication of where Catalonia wants to go, but I think until the Spanish military, you know, lets the people have a free vote, and we can truly see. Uh, what the demographics of, of Catalonia want to do in regard to their independence. I don't think that you, you can support a referendum uh, for, success, for secession uh, until that occurs. Well, that was my biggest problem with the whole process, that Sp as Spanish government and the Spanish Constitutional Court was was basically not at all open to letting Catalans, you know, decide their their own destiny. And you know, I think that it's a perfect demonstration that it seems that democracy is only extended uh, so far. That uh, basically, if you know, a group of uh, people in a country don't feel like they're being uh, you know, rep represented, of uh, or they don't like the direction the country's heading, they don't have. Uh, they they don't have the option to to go on their own and you know have the, have their own voice and I and I think that you know Spain's act, uh, Spanish government's actions have been have been quite telling that you know you're only uh, partly free. Yeah, well, I think that 
if the Catalonians were allowed a free vote, they would vote to, to leave Spain. But until we can get that to happen, whether there needs to be some kind of UN supervision uh, throughout the, the whole voting process, that's another question. But until we can see the majority of people t going out to vote and the majority of people voting yes, then I don't think that this can go ahead. Uh, but the UN needs to tell Spain that uh, you can't be violently suppressing voter turnouts for independence. This is something that hasn't been seen in Spain, or in fact probably the Western Europe, since the days of, of Franco. So it is rather concerning that we are seeing this in a you know, relatively progressive, democratic, uh, Western European state such as Spain. And it makes us realise that, the, the, that our liberty and our freedom and our democracy can crumble beneath our feet if, if we don't fight for it. And uh, it's interesting that you know European nations they've all said this is an eternal matter for Spain. That's they're, uh, they're they're fine with you know say you know other nations seceding like you know South South Sudan and you know East Timor and you know even Kosovo. But when it's you know somebody in the you know within their own backyard, they're like you know oh this you know, can't possibly be allowed, we're all strong together. Like, for example, I really rejected David Cameron's uh, interference in the Scottish uh, referendum a few years ago. I thought he should have been, you know, hands off and let the, the Scots decide, you know, whether they wanted to become independent and not try to, you know, influence the outcome. Yeah, at the end of the day, this decision is for the Catalonians to make or the Spaniards that live in Catalonia, depending how you want to look at it, uh, it's it's their decision to make and it's no one else's decision and no one else really should be trying to influence them. Um, and I, I really do think that David Cameron's uh, interference within the Scottish referendum a couple of years ago probably did more uh, you know, in favour of the other side's viewpoint. And I think that telling the Catalonians that secession is a bad idea will probably only galvanise them uh, and unite them uh, to break away from Spain. So I think that the European community should just respect the rights of Catalonians at this stage. And they have, you know, historically, you know, small nations do better than, than larger nations. I mean, this whole, you know, motto of stronger together, it's not actually true. I mean, look at nations such as Switzerland and, you know, Austria, which was, you know, once part of um, uh, the German co uh, Confederation. I mean, they're very successful small nations. And even if you go smaller, if you look at, you know, Luxembourg, uh, going over to Asia, if you look at, you know, Singapore and, you know, Hong Kong, which has still, you know, got some form of independence, you know, they're some of the wealthiest, you know, nations in the world. And, you know, they're not at threat of, you know, being, you know, invaded. They have lots of companies have, have their headquarters there. I mean, they're, they're great places to live despite their size. Yeah, and if, going back to Germany, I guess if you've got different ethnic groups of people living under one country, such as Yugoslavia, for instance, that does cause some tension as well. And if the countries are, uh, well, divided into their ethnic or cultural groups uh, as well, uh, then there's less clash. Um, you know, that that, that is good. Uh, and as well, the fiscal management of a country tends to be better if it's a smaller nation as well, if you, as you said, if you look at countries like New Zealand or, or uh, Hong Kong or, or what have you, their fiscal management tends to be a lot bit better than, than huge countries like the United States and Russia where there's a lot of potential for uh, manipulation and uh, corruption, uh, you know, special interest favours. Uh, that all becomes less likely as well when the, the populace of the country is smaller because there's less people to govern and therefore less government itself. That's why I'm broadly sympathetic with the uh, Western Australian secession movement or uh, WAXIT, which they, they, there was a motion at the, the previous uh, 
Western Australian Liberal State Conference to uh, explore secession. You know, if they want, you know, want feel that you know they're a different peoples from Australia and want to you know make it on their own, they've got plenty of resources to make it happen. Then you know, I say you know go for it. Um, I'm not as radical as you there, Tim. Um, I like WA because there's, uh, you know, we can, there's a lot of mining there, you know, how else is our, you know, huge uh, government going to function if we can't steal tax dollars from WA, Tim? We've got to be realistic here. Um, but yeah, WA have got a lot to complain about. Uh, they are probably one of the most, you know, efficient you know, state economies of probably the last decade because of the mining boom, uh, but they haven't, you know, received many of the services back that they've paid in taxation, um, and most of say the the money and the the tax money, it's created through the the great efficiency of the Western Australian economy, has been pumped into less efficient um, economies such as South Australia. Um, I guess after all, we, we do live in a federation, but this this type of federation that we, we do live in isn't um, about, you know, states competing against one another anymore. It's about, uh, you know, to compete, you know, who can have the best, but it's, it's to compete about which states can manage to get the most uh, GST or almost tax revenue uh, back from the federal government. So I think that our very uh, federation itself has been corrupted, and this has happened, you know, after you know, around World War Two, when the when the federal government, you know, gained the powers uh, to levy income tax. So I think that that's where the, this vast centralisation and this overinflated governments come from. And I think that we are seeing the consequences of that through a small yet influential movement. This has been an unshackled fast. Please like, comment, and subscribe. While you're here, grab our free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and visit theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.